Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Let's read Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 is a, it's our scripture today. Are you there? Let's read verse 30. 30 and 31. Isaiah 40. Let me greet you in the name of Jesus. If you are us, say Amen. Isaiah 40 from 30 to 31. It says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait for Jehovah shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings, or with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk, not faint. You saw the verse there? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I was meditating about this verse today. When the Bible says, even the youth, Bible the youth, they, they have abilities. You know, when you search scriptures, the Bible says, the, the young men shall prophesy. Amen. And the old men will dream dreams. You, know, you can see that dreaming is not as, I mean, it's easy. It's not like uh, seeing visions. I mean, the gifts will be waking in young people. The of them shows their ability in everything. But here the Bible says, He giveth power to the faint. I'm just reading verse 29 now. Verse 29. And to him that hath no might, he increases strength. And he says, even the youth shall faint. So you can see that it's only God that will always give strength. Because there will be time where you will be weary. Just one day you'll be weary. Can you tell anybody, tell anybody you are going to be weary. One day you'll be weary. You need God. Because if you weary without God, you will faint. God is there to increase your strength. Let me just read again. It says, one, but they that wait for Jehovah. In other words, fighting about, uh, fighting weariness, fighting weariness, when you fight weariness, is when you are able to wait. The Bible says they shall mount up with wings as eagles and they shall run and not be weary but and they shall walk maswa. and not faint. Let me give you three people in the Bible who were very strong. The first one was a, a prophet, Elijah. In 1 Kings 19, verse 1. 1 Kings 19, verse 4. 1 Kings 19, verse 4. When 
Elijah was wearied. Ah, Elia khatetsi. He prayed that he must die. O ila rapelo re nka be ano itokofalela. Remember the Bible says even the youth le ba baswa will weary one day. Ba tola pa tshileleng. Weary is not for all people. O la pasi ba tho ba tso fetse ba ba go. Everyone you need God to be strengthened. Tell him you need God to be strengthened. Elijah was a man that, you know, when he speaks something, it happens. The Bible says, but he had a nature like ours. One time, you know, when Ab was a king, and the Bible says there was Jezebel. Bible Jezebel. After God did everything, Jezebel said, I will kill this man. Tomorrow this time, I will kill this man. The Bible says the prophet ran to the desert. He ran the whole day. He was worried. One of the prayers prayed. He said, He said, He said, He said, I'm not different with my fathers. In other words, he was seeing things that his fathers has never seen. But that day he said, I, I accept I'm not different with my fathers. He prayed for death. And when he was worried, that was a day when he was in agony. That God decided to choose someone. Weariness is not good for us. Weariness can allow God to replace us. Tessa, do not be weary. That is the topic of today. Weariness, whatever comes to make you weary, is because of your destiny. If you have got a destiny, you will be worried. But if you know that God has assigned something in front of you, you will wait upon him. And the strength from the Lord will come upon you. Because of the strength of the Lord is coming to you. Ask your neighbor, what is it that has wearied you? Elijah was worried. Do you know what is wearied you? Elijah was worried. We have our Master Jesus. If we read Luke 22, verse 44, we found the Lord was worried. The Lord was worried. But the Bible says he overcame it by praying intently. Can we read Luke, Luke 22, verse 44? He was in agony. Now, I will tell you what makes the Lord to be in agony. Luke 22, verse 44. Read, Mama. Luke 22, verse 44. Mm. <clears throat> yes. It says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. What makes Jesus to be strengthened? He was focused. When he prayed intently, he prayed with focus. Agony was there. 
But he was focused in prayer. If you remember that time, the Bible says, the angel came to strengthen him. You cannot receive strength from God unless you are focused. Because Ogani is coming to confuse you. So that you become weary. In Christianity, if you have not reached that state, you are not a Christian. Tell them, if you have not reached a state of being weary, you are not a Christian. It means you are not yet being tempted. Because temptations are there for you to, to be proved of where you belong. Temptations must come. So you have to be wearied one day. So Jesus, the second person I'm talking about, he was focused. He prayed intently. The first one was Elijah. A man who was chosen by God. The second one was our Lord Jesus Christ. A man who was sent from above. The third one was Saul. A man who was chosen by people. If we read Second Samuel, I want us to read Second Samuel from let's say chapter what chapter one. Let's let's go there. Samuel chapter one. Yes, just read there. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites and David had stayed two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when he came to David that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. So David said to the young man, Who told Jonathan his son, uh, sorry, how do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? Then the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance to be on Mount Gibwa, there was Saul leaning on his spear, and indeed the chariots, the horsemen followed hard after him. Now when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I answered, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me again, Please stand over me and kill me, so anguish has come upon me, but my life still remains in me. So I stood over him and killed him. Because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Therefore David took hold of his own clothes and took them and so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fastened fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel because they had fallen by the sword 
I want to explain to you what has been read. You can go home and read also. If people give you power, one day they will also take their power. Concerning Saul, he was chosen by people and God agreed. But look here. This, this is what was happening. The Bible says when David returned from Ziklag from fighting the Amalekites the Bible says he destroyed the Amalekites. I show you, he destroyed them. But after he destroyed the Amalekites one Amalekite moved and joined Saul. And Saul was fighting David. Can you see there's these people that always come here to join, going there to join. They are called Amalekites. You are joining, joining. The Amalekites moved and run away from, from David. In other words, the moment when he saw that the fighting was fierce, he joined Saul. When he joined Saul, he didn't know that the Philistines were coming. Now, the Philistines were fighting the Israelites. When the Philistines were fighting the Israelites, now the, 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 the Israelites were defeated. The same Amalekite was not far away from the king. The moment when Saul looked back, he saw the Amalekite. I want to tell you that the Amalekites are not going to help you. They, they work to finish you. That's why the, the Amalekites work to finish you. You know, I was thinking about this. I say, think <inaudible> about having <inaudible> a church of the Amalekites. Church of the Amalekites. <inaudible> if you ever go around, you find a church of the Amalekites. <inaudible> because they are there to kill the, the vision bearer. <inaudible> the Bible says the Bible moment. <inaudible> Uh, the king looked back. The Amalekites brought a message. He says, hey, the Philistines are very close. Because that is his work. So the Philistines are so close. And that man said, eh, I have already defeated me. Take my shot and kill me. The Amalekites took the shot and killed me. This Amalekites, if he was like David. He was supposed to have made Saul to escape. Because it costs anointing for someone to save someone. But the Amalekites were there to bring the finish of someone who's dead. The Bible says, after he has finished the king, because it's his job of turning around. Now he took the crown to David. David had wisdom. He questioned, uh, what happened? Did you read what, 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 did you hear what we read? The Bible says, the Amalekite, came and bowed with submission. He worshipped David like he honored him. But he was there, he was fighting David before. And David could not be tired because he trusted in the Lord. He said, bow there and submit. Bow there submit. David asked you, hey, tell us where David did you go? He began to explain and say, hey, the Israelites, 
I, I no, I, I all defeated. <laughs> and then I'm the one who escaped. And then naki And then even even Saul and Jonathan. Ali Holy Saul Holy Jonathan Moray Bahuile. The king said, "Who told you?" Ah, Khosher. Who did you say? It happened. Idia age. It just happened to find myself in Gilboa. You know, there are, there are many people who are here to weary you. How they come here, they don't know. It happened. I mean, it happened. If truly, if truly your strength is from people, you are going to meet the Amalekites. And it happens they found themselves in. It says, it happened to find myself in the Mount Gilbo. When I was there, the king wanted to kill himself. So I helped him. You escape. The Bible says the king tore his clothes. Because he knows that whoever fight the anointed will fight him. Listen to this. Your battle is my battle. Whatever that wears you can wear me. But if my strength is from you. I have to get someone also to increase me. But if it is from God, even when I'm discouraged by you, you won't weary me down. We need to move away from trusting you. They will weary you soon. There are too much Amalekites. And they are there to weary you. Those who trust in the Lord. Their strength shall be renewed. And they will run without getting tired. But if you trust the Amalekites, when you are down, down, they will finish you. Let me ask you a question. Why this Amalekite escape? Why It means the Philistine were far. It means even Saul could still escape. But he said they are around. In other words, he lied. To increase the pressure. I don't know if you are hearing me. Pastor, say, hey, don't listen to people. Gather the strength from God. And you will be able to move. If not, they are Malachi's around. Jesus, in Matthew 11, 25 to 30, Jesus spoke about our calling. Can you just read Matthew 11, 25, verse 25? Matthew 11, verse 25. I won't talk unless I read the verse. Verse 25. Do not be weary. It says, At that time Jesus answered and said, Thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent, and they have revealed them to babes. To babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all ye who are all labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you read 25? Yes, I did. Read it again. And at that time Jesus answered and said, 
I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Did you hear that verse? say. One of the problems we have as Christians, we are so much matured. And the knowledge we, we have does not bring revelation. You know, if you read there, Jesus said, Oh, you have revealed this to babes. You have you ever seen how babes behave? You know, children, they don't care what will happen tomorrow. We are so much concerned of everything. Whereas the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him. All your cares. But we are concerned about all cares. Here, Jesus says, I thank you, Father. You have revealed this to babes. And the wise and the prudent are in the dark. The reason why they are weary is because of no revelation. Listen, once you have revelation, there are things when they happen to you, you won't even consider them. You will run your race. I don't know if you hear me. That's why I want to run my race. I can see what I'm seeing, but I want to run my race. I've been challenged Yes, but I want hey, to run my race. If we read about what Jesus is saying, why he said babes when the old people are there? Why babes? Why they are focused on the milk. I don't know if you hear me. Amen. We were supposed to be focusing in the word. If we are babes, we were supposed to be focusing the word. Okay, we have been clapped. But what says the word of God? We are sick. What says the word of God? We are challenged. What, what, says the word? what will make us to run our race without being tired? It's because of the revelation we got. I don't know if you hear me. Listen, what makes you not know, to get to, to be tired? You are putting all to yourself. If you took everything to yourself, very soon, you will come to church and go home, you don't feel anything. Your speed in your life of Christian life will be reduced. Your desire of staying in the world will be affected. Because there are many things you are focusing on. I will give you an example. Not long, I found, I mean, let me say five years back. I found that we don't pray unless we've got problems. I just found that, that Christians, they pray because of problems. And the Bible says, pray without ceasing. And Jesus said, my yoke is light. And if this prayer is a light thing, it's not what makes us to cry the way we cry. The reason why we come to church today is because there are certain things we are saying and we are not getting those things. And when the Bible says, seek the kingdom and all shall we are Christian seekers. We are not Christian. We, are, we, we have got this thing called seekers. We are Christians who are searching for what God can offer. We are not Christians because we understand the revelation. Look here how we pray today. 
Why do we go to mountain? Why? Why are we going to mountain? Why? The reason why we are going to mountain is because there's something we are searching. It is, it is no longer based in our revelation. It is no longer based in our Christian life. And our Christian life is based on what we need. That's why I'm going to the mountain. That's why I want to be a prophet. I want to, I want to hear from God. And as the Bible is in and front of you, you. God is speaking in the Bible. God is speaking in the Bible. I don't know if you hear me. That is why we are getting things which are wrong. That is why we are confused today. That is why we are weary. That is why we are That is why we are weary. Jesus said, my, my yoke is light. You just take the Bible. You meditate on it. You believe in it. You ask, you wait. As you are seeking, all shall follow. I see blessings following you. you. I see success following if, you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask yourself, why are you worried? Why are you worried? Why are you worried? Why are you worried? This nowadays, you don't even sleep. I have a child there. You're not sleeping anymore. And some other people are sleeping. You don't sleep anymore. Because there is something you are searching for. Not so long your, your head will run around, will be mixed up. You will have stress. But the doing a stroke. <laughs> you will be beaten by stroke. Because you are putting in things on your head that God never said they must be in your head. Who you are going to get those things you are crying for? <laughs> and are you called for those things? <laughs> Who told you you'll have a business? And why have you registered a business? You must first get a revelation. Then you'll be able to live a holy life. You're having no problems. When you have problems, thank you, Lord. you will say, God, thank you. When you have a challenge, you will say, God, thank you. And you run your race. You run your race. Are you hearing me? You must run your race. Run your race. So, 99% of Christians they didn't come to church because of salvation. They are worried. They are worried. They've been going around. Going around. When they, when they reach here, yeah. they get prophets. Within two years, two years they are going to get a two, two room house. Two room house never came. They go. Two They are tired. They go after two years. After two years. Four room. When they go to another church. They get you. You get four room. They, they are tired of two room. Two years. They, they say they give this church one year. They give this church one year. After one year, when four room has not come, they move to another church. They give this church six months. They say, if this thing that this man is not saying, I pass. And if nothing happened, they give this church two months. From there, they are from this church. This church. This church. This church. You hold them tight. You put them in a corner. And ask them why. They will tell you that I'm weary. I'm weary. Because they trusted people than God. I want you to trust God today. I want you to trust God today. You shall renew your strength. Let's read 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Maybe we read chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 5. Verse 5. Yes. Let's read from 6. It will help us a lot. 
Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. Let's I want us to look at that verse. It's important. Read, read that verse again. It's so well. Now godliness with what? contentment is uh-huh. great gain. What is that? What is contentment? Contentment king. That's who. Godliness and contentment is a great gain. Read, read again, Mama, verse 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. My God. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And I, having... Right, stop there, stop there, Baba. This verse is very hey, Look at me, I want to tell you because... You're, you're not finding this verse in your Bible. You're not finding it. Yeah. This is New Testament. You're going to the Old Testament. This is a New Testament. New Testament. All right, listen to this. The Bible says... Goldiness with... Contentment. Because it says because you didn't bring your car here. You didn't bring your job here. You Amen. didn't bring your business here. You didn't bring your money here. Business, okay, read again, Mama, read. Now godliness with contentment is contentment. great gain. Yes. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. Let me ask you the question. Since you were born, it's a low level. did you ever see a coffin? A coffin. Which can carry two people. Huh? Did you ever see something like that? Are you sure? Did you ever see coffin? Which you have got an extra, maybe put a furniture. So always you, you see coffin that can carry the body. This is what the scripture is saying. It, it is a certain that if you came here with nothing, even what you have, you will leave it here. This makes you not to be worried. Do you know that all these things you are crying for, you are going to worry your spirit. The car you are trying to buy with the debt is going to affect you one day. This is, this is the car you will leave here. I mean, this scripture is, I mean, this scripture is helping us to understand that we need revelation. We need revelation. Be honest. Because many things we are trying for they are useless. Contentment, godliness. Contentment. Godliness with contentment. Your focus in holiness is a great gain. But all these other things, the gadgets, I'm telling if they bury you with your cell phone, they will take it. Especially people of Mochari will take it. They will just take it and put a plastic there. Now, can, you, can you read verse 8? Look at verse 8 there. It's very important. Because Ourselves today, we cannot focus unto God. And God can speak with us. Because of many things we are engaging ourselves on. And yes. having food and clothing, uh, uh. with this we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich My fall God. into temptation oh. and a snare. And into many foolish and harmful lusts. My God. If you read that, you will understand that everybody here have got dreams. It's not wrong. But these dreams bring forth, makes us to go to another level where we have to compare ourselves with others. 
You know the dreams we have now because they are from God. Dreams, dreams we have are from God. But we tell them to make them they are not from God. The, the moment you see someone bring, bringing Mazda, even yourself you want to bring Mazda. You forget about your own dreams. And this put to pressure today. And then take this some hatale lo mo we na una li di koloto. Ezuni shiba rabere sa di bona shukorodo. When I look at you, I just see death. Bako bire bako bere ono rabere. You are worried. You cannot even pray. Shukorodo zoto dara kezui. Your death is too much. There are calls coming in. When other calls come in, you just look at them. <laughs> Some of the calls you even cast them, but it's you who started the issue. And when it rings, you say in the name of Jesus, and this call is standing at the same place with you. If if we can only have food and clothing, it's enough. People who can go to heaven so quickly are people who have nothing. If you can start having money and everything, when you are start to be sick, you run to the doctor. From there, una doctor mkene kene kula. Or from there, there is doctors whom whom. Futi mwa wa medical aid. Even those ones who got medical aid, it's a problem. Na yeso wali wa hacha shuma. Even your Jesus does not even work. Bebo noti Jesus has two ni we. You are you have entered into some other things, something else. Kama tovu zana shuma tovu. Bebo noti Jesus has two. Bebo noti Jesus has two ni you have entered into something else. Kama tovu zana shuma tovu. Daba ribe iwe. Be iwe we. Can you tell them in venda in my language? Tell them in venda. Be iwe. Be iwe. Not the Genesis Rituni. And you cannot even come out. Can you explain again? In, tell, tell somebody close to you in Venda. Which I'm telling how we can come to Venda. Wei we you. Wei we. Wei we meaning you. Not the Genesis Rituni. Have entered into things. You cannot even come out. What is it? What is it? You have entered through your head. <laughs> your head is always thinking. <laughs> when it's month end, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like you want to beat lightning. <laughs> when you go to pray your, pay your debts, you just enter there and there you don't even look at other people. <laughs> the Bible says, Food and clothing. If you have those, you must thank the Lord. Stop entering into things. You are now into things. Your hair, you paint it. Jesus. You are doing it for somebody else. Even the life you are living, you're no longer living for yourself. You are living for somebody. When you are wearing your things, you want to show us label. When you are wearing a watch, you want to show us his Gucci. Your ring is what, what you are suffering. You are suffering so much, your spirit is tired. Your spirit is tired. That's why you can't even pray. You have entered through your head. I want to draw you out. Come out. Come out. In Jesus' name. Can you just open the book of Hebrews? Very soon I will finish. 12. 12. Let's read from verse 1. Verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnared us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speak to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him, from whom the Lord loves he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, they, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not let's, much more let's readily? Stop let's stop there. Let's try to... Uh, let's try to make it like a... Let's, let's make film about this. Can I get two people here? Who are, who are active? Yeah, let me get this man. This man is active. Come. Come to. Yes. Can you see these two men here? If you are in the race here, you are like this, you are two, you are in the race that God is speaking about. So when you run a race, come a brother steps. Come here. Close. Stop there. Face there. When you run the race, the Bible says there are things that will come to entangle you. You know, when, when the Bible says entangle, it means these things will come your way. Will just come to take your focus. So that you won't run again. And the Bible says, if you run, even when those things are entangling you, it's called chastening from God. You run, even when you are entangled, it is no longer an issue that you have been entangled. God is dealing with you as a son. But those things can still put you to be illegitimate. I want to show you what I'm saying. Can you just run? Run. Okay, stop. When I say run, I want to see number one here. To there. Where are. Are. Can you see there? I count for one, two, three, four. Yes. All right. Come back walking. The, the tall brother, you can see that he got number one. In other words, Come this on, brother, he knows now that he knows. He knows that he knows that he knows that he knows that he can overtake this one. So, what, what Satan will do will bring sin and other things like challenges problems. Let's bring sickness. Come. come. Your name is sickness. Eh? Brother, carry sickness. Just bend the carry sickness. Eh? Carry sickness. Jesus. All right. Now, this is sickness. <laughs> Can you see that? Eh. We are going to run. Rio Kitty. Rio Kitty. Remember, you overtake that one. When I open my tomorrow, we'll fit you. Now, sickness. I'm coming. One. Two. Three. Four. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ah. You saw that brother. Le abona butiela. You saw the brother. Le baboni buti. Come here. I want to show you something. Come to me. My brother. Buti we. God is not interested. Look here. Mojemu. Face them now. Le bela kopeni. God is not interested. Mojema le belele. On this point. Mutaba ingia uri mutu fita kana kumangwa. Who's going to reach there first? Kemanga ta fita ngpili kwa. God is not interested. Amajema ali beli yeyone. Are you ready? Lenta. God is not interested. Who's going to reach here first? Mudima acha tu kauri mangu to fita ningwa kana kumang. God is interested. Mudimu acha to fela. In you. Kalina. He wants you to reach there. Oya kore lena le fita kwa. Whether you are entangled by sickness. Ona le matata maluechi. Whether you are entangled by something, God wants you to reach there. I don't know if you hear me. I can tell you. And listen. In Christianity, we don't compete. 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 Can get reward better than this one before God. Because though he was entangled, he ran to reach there. I don't know if you are hearing me. And listen to this. The Bible says the chastening of the Lord. Whatever that happens to you, the Bible says it works for good. The challenge, the sickness, the problem, whatever you are going through, is there for you. To challenge you, I didn't challenge. So that you must not reach there. I don't know if you're hearing me. But yourself, you run your race to the edge. God bless you. So, Janong, the Bible says when you experience that, Bible says how you cope and live there, and you still carry on. One of the la pilu unchu kiti maliuli joalo. God is dealing with you as such. Mudi mu shuma na liwa na jolo kamu rwa. But if you experience that you stop, mara how you can't cope to cope with the way you fail before God. Upa lechi pilu kamu. And if you fail before God, there's nothing that God can do. And if you fail before God, there's nothing that God can do. I want to tell you. Stop judging Christians by what they have. 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 Stop judging You see them running. The Bible says, even sin is there. He can You can see this man slowing the spirit. Speed. Are you hearing me? That's what Satan wants you to do. He wants to weary you. When you are weary, you lock down. Now you can't run now. You can't do what you were doing before. Listen to this. Whether it's tough or not, stay constant in what you are doing. Carry on praying. Don't look back. Because your blessing and your breakthrough is around the corner. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some people are, are rejecting you. Fighting you. Looking at you because of what you are going through. Can I tell you this? When God wants to approve you. For great things. A bad things will come. I'm telling you bad things will come. And when they come here, and on the race, don't ever think. Don't ever think. Here on the road, 
you won't meet people who will discourage you. You meet them because they are discouraged. They can't run their race. So you meet them on the road to discourage you. And tell you that, hey, you won't go anywhere. We know where you come from. We know where you are going. No, they don't know where you are going. Carry on running. Carry on running. God will take you there. Anybody who can think or tell you that he knows your destiny. That particular person can affect you on the race. Could affect you here on the race. Thank God today. There's challenge on your left. There are problems on your right. There is sickness in front of you. Many things are happening. Listen to this. Trust in him. Trust in him. He will renew your strength. There is a great assignment that is coming your way. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Mama, can you read verse 7 in this chapter? Verse 7 there. It's important before we, we close here. If you endure chastening, uh -huh. God deals with you as with sons. If you endure chastening, God is dealing with you as what? As with as sons. your sons. My God. Okay? For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? Hmm. Can you see now? You are on the road, problems are coming, but you are focused. You are on the road, challenges are coming, but you are running away. It's changed to be, it's no longer Satan, it's God. It's part of training to your destiny. I want to tell you that there is nobody that just wake up and found himself big. You have to go through stages. Tell them you, you must go through stages. You cannot just wake up, you find yourself big. You go through stages. I don't know if you hear me. You reach a place where you are slow down. You are slowing down. You reach a place where when you run, you feel everything is flexible. When you begin to think uh, you are around, you are around to break through. You enter dryness. Even the, the, the Israelites face the same thing. When they moved out from Egypt, they enter desert. From desert, they found the sea. They were followed. Because Satan will never leave you. And the Bible says they carry all. And God opened a way. I see God opening your way. I see God opening your way. Don't be tired. Don't be tired. I want to tell you, a Christian who's very powerful and certain fear that Christian he's not a Christian without attack he's a Christian who knows what to respond on the attack a Christian under attack and he knows what to respond that Christian, Satan is afraid of him. If you don't have an attack, Christian. Our Lord Jesus Christ, every day, challenge, challenge. Attack. How many times the Lord Jesus escaped death? Here the Bible says, You have not suffered so much against sin to extend that you lose blood. You have never suffered so much. You want to do what is right. You say, me, I can rather die. You have not that level. So what you have to do, you take your eyes. You look unto him. The author and the finish of your faith. Who, 
But the joy that was set before him, he despised shame. He knew that there was something that is coming. If you know, like him who knew, when challenges strike, you are still going to set your eyes above. I don't know if you are hearing me. Where you are going, I see God lifting you. I see God raising you. That's God is lifting you. God is lifting you. God is lifting you. Set your eyes above. That's where you are going. Not where you are. Most of the time, as I'm concluding this message, we even ask ourselves questions. When tough times come, why? 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 It's a destiny. If you don't have a destiny, nothing will happen to you. Nothing. You will have good health. You will enjoy everything. Everything will come to you. But very soon you will lose your life. Unexpectedly. Don't remember the Amalekites. Let's read this scripture with Galatians 6, verse 9. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary. I'm reading this. It says, Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good at the proper time. If we don't get weary, if we don't give in, we will reap. That scripture is saying that. Let us not grow weary. Let us not grow weary. Can you just read that scripture and amplify the Bible? This scripture is important for all of us. When Satan wants to deal with you, he uses people you trust most. You are discouraged. Even where you are working, business partners, these people you think you love so much, from, from now on, no more prayer. Just go to bed, you sleep. And ask God, why? Why are you telling me this? I'm always do good. You are beginning to pray a prayer of a Pharisee. <laughs> a prayer of a Pharisee, me. And that prayer was big, it was a worry prayer. I, I first twice a week. I mean, I, I'm not like this one, but why? I mean, we, we are standing in one place, but why? I, I first twice, I mean, even my tithe is here. You know, this are, why makes you a Pharisee? Why when I get over my Pharisee? I say, worry makes you a Pharisee. Oh, we lay low, dear, over my Pharisee. Can you read that verse nine? I'm trying to open it. Can you read in your Bible, Mama? She says it's not finding it. Balen mo Bible ni balen. Aral na liyon. Is it what? And let us not. And let us not. Stand up. And let us not grow, grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap, if we do not lose heart. You see, that is, that is your verse. True. Very true. That's what I was saying today. Yes. You say what? That's what I was saying today. I was like, I'm, I'm tired. You say what? This I told myself today. I said, I feel like I'm tired. <laughs> okay, read it again. I really happy. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. 
Right. Don't say us. Mention your name. Okay. It's your, it's your verse. <laughs> okay. And let us, therefore, not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not. Not we shall reap, Tebuho. <laughs> oh, reap, Tebuho. Okay. Let us not, and let us not, let us, Tebuho, not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap. Ooh, ooh. Tebuho shall reap. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes if you want to hear these scriptures, put now your name there. Read it again, put your name. Stand up. Read it again, put your name. Stand up. Put your name. Stand up. Put your name. Put your name. Put your name. And let us, not, let us therefore, not grow weary while do, doing good, for in due season shall, shall therefore reap. I don't know this. <laughs> Uh, can you, where's your Bible, Baba? Stand up. You read it because even yourself. Stand up. This is your verse. If you read this verse three, three times, you'll be delivered. By, can you see that? Can you see what happened to her now? If you read this verse only three times, uh, the demon that is, because it's a demon. It's coming oh, that you are running. It comes and boom. When our yaki team and you will not allow her touch. Let Lydia not become weary in doing good for at the, at the prop. Your name is who? Lydia. Lydia. So read, not, don't say Lydia, say Lydia. Ewena. <laughs> You don't know your name. I know it. So. Let Lydia not become weary in doing good. Uh -huh. For at the proper time you will reap a harvest if we do not. Lydia will reap. Lydia will reap harvest if we do not give up. You are doing what now? Huh? She's vomiting. That lady is vomiting. In fact, if... I want to show you that in scriptures, there is yeah, power. I don't know what you are searching. You, you search for people. But you go to the Bible. If you take the Bible, you read this one verse, one verse, one verse. You will be delivered. One verse. verse. I don't know if you are hearing me. Amen. Let me take it to my brother. Stand up, my brother. Where's your Bible? You, you can't even see. Yes. My brother, you can't even see. But dear Savon. Read. Stand up and read. <coughs> we are holding the Bible. Let Hebe not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, I shall reap if I do not lose heart. You see, can you stand up and read? Let Kucho. Let Kujo not become weary in doing good, for Kujo in due season, he will rap. It's happening now. This thing that you are reading, can you hear my brother? Look at my brother here. Can you hear my brother? This thing, when you read scripture, this scripture starts to work on you. You, are, you have a Bible. Stand up and read. And let Angelina not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, Angelina will reap. Look at Angelina here. What? Look at Angelina. Angelina. Look at Angelina. If you read scriptures, and it, come, come, stand up. Come here for the first time. Read. Yes, yes. <laughs> and let Max not weary while doing good. For in due season, Max shall reap if Max do not lose heart. Mm, it's happening to you now when you read that. Get, stand up and read. You so and let Steve Wamba not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, Steve Wamba will reap. It's happening to you. 
Can you stand up, you people? You read in your Bible, something will happen Amen. everywhere. Something will happen Amen. everywhere here. The scripture Amen. is powerful. Put your name there. Put your name. Read. Watch, 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 watch. By the scripture, you can be delivered. Watch here. Watch here. They are falling down. Watch. Read it again louder. Read last time. Congratulations. watching Charis TV